Back with Bobby and JJ Radio. I think we're a little overwhelmed. A lot of dogs uh, here earlier. And we have Mr. Juan Solis, a very, very important guy. Used to be a state representative, was a city councilman for uh, Awesome District 5, which is the beloved west side of San Antonio. Correct. Right now, he uh, is the vice president of BB&T, the location of Blanco and 410. And what we're going to talk about today, he's also the boy, of one of, on the board of directors for Port San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us. Hey, man, I'm just happy we're talking about dogs today, man. I the know. program's really been hot. We usually so. talk about Bob. He's the only dog that we talk about <laughs> usually. Yeah, that's true. So we got no, some cute ones fine. here. Absolutely. Yeah, so talk about what, what's going on at Port San Well, you know, one of the things that we do is we, we talk about economic development, and we're always looking to create jobs and really good for housing. But one of the things we also have to do is a balance. So one of the balance that we had was the creation and the allowance of working with people like Paws for Purple Hearts. Right. It's a great organization. When you think about San Antonio, you think about Military USA. Mm-hmm. We're a unique community that always been is about our veterans and the opportunities that are there, not only for them health-wise, but also for them for rehab-wise. And this is what this is all about. Sure. When you think of combat, people who have suffered, they, they you know, post-traumatic stress, all the different things that happen to veterans, we are in the forefront. When you think of, of, of warriors, right? Warriors that were wounded warriors and those that are rehabbing, there's different ways for them to rehab. But one way that is becoming more and more successful is the dog therapy, the canine therapy, giving them the opportunity to work with with a pet that is ingratiating to them, that is appreciative. If you remember in the interview, what he said was working with these type of dogs, the reason was was so important was that the dog had a great sense of wanting to please its Mm -hmm. master. And that is what's needed many times with these veterans who have gone through so many wars, have seen people die, have maybe been at the, at, at, places where they didn't really want to be that when they come home those things still haunt them and so one of the ways to do this is is a therapy with canines and that's what pause for its purple hearts is all about so we at port san antonio supported a hundred percent we're excited that they're going to be there september 20th is a grand opening we're yeah. hoping that you guys can attend for sure it's coming up soon right so what we're excited about is the opportunity that we have to be able to host them and allow more people to come visit not only port san antonio for a job but also also to realize the emphasis that we have for the respect more than anything for our military people. And just the awareness of something like that. I didn't even know it existed, so I'm glad that they're able to come on and we can talk about they it. They have a great history. They came from the state of California. Now they're in San Antonio. And one of the things that you see is the fact that when they look at what they want to accomplish, it's nothing more than helping our warriors get strong. And I like that it went full circle because they're, they're enticing veterans to come out and actually, because who better to make someone come out than Noah, the cutest dog on earth. <laughs> exactly. And then teaching the veterans to to actually help train the dogs that are eventually going to be in the hands of a veteran. And so I like that it's just a, it's a, almost a complete package of well, what's when you needed. Think about it, absolutely, because when you think about it, one of the hardest things for people to come back to the workforce, to our world, is the daily stress that they have to go with, right? Sure. And you and I can handle stress in different ways, right? Some people do stress, the, uh, they go work out, they go different things to handle stress. But unfortunately, what you start to see in this, because of the war effects that they have, they tend to work inward sure. and they, they tend to be isolated. A dog like this, just like everyday dogs, just when we were younger, they bring us out. They yeah. bring out the good in everybody. Who can turn out? I mean, you know, yeah. the dogs today were just excellent. And they're a clear example of just how exciting it is when they light up a room. And so what they do is they light up the minds and the hearts and the spirits of these warriors once again to realize that the world is not as bad as perhaps they viewed, but not as bad as they experienced, but more importantly, that they fully understand that life is good. Sure. So right now they're, they're at two dogs, but how, how big are they looking yeah, to grow they, this? They hope to go up to 12 and 15, really. And, and, and you're absolutely correct. When you look at how they're going to be trained, right, so two-way. One, the veteran gets the opportunity to have a no-stress job Mm -hmm. working, training the dogs. Mm -hmm. Then after that, the graduate, the dog, goes to another one who is actually perhaps could be the service dog for that other veteran. So it is full circle. It's completely about full circle of helping people get to that next level and integrating the veteran the whole way. So for the perspective of what a veteran can do, uh, the veteran will be able to, to not only train, but he'll be able to participate. Our hope is to get to 12 and then get larger. Really, it comes down to the, the, the generosity of our people who are listening mm-hmm. to contribute, to participate, and to help fund some of the changes that we need. I didn't even get to that with them. How can people 
people get involved and help yeah, that, the that cause? Yeah, the Apostle Purple Heart, they just have to look it up on the Internet and get involved with it, make a contribution, because every single dog is going to affect the lives, two lives, right? Mm -hmm. The one of the trainer and the other one being the one that receives the dog afterwards. So if you think of a trainer looking at working in our world today, they get the opportunity to come back and, and not go into a job where they have maybe goals to meet or things that can really affect them, but it's something that is just warm, smoothing, uh, soothing is the correct word for it, and just love, because that's what dogs are. For sure. Absolutely. So what are some other things? Quick takeaway, Juan, while we still have you. Port essay, what else are you guys? Oh, we're horizon? excited. It's exciting. You know, we are all about cybersecurity. You, you, the city of San Antonio is shifting its gears. When you remember back in the 80s, we have a minute, uh, back in the days, you look at the things that we have. First, you had us as a hospitality where we were doing a job, so we were doing a, a lot of different things. We moved over to a medical community where now we have the big thing change at the, at the medical center. Now we're moving to a thing that is really, truly an, a cutting edge, and that's cyber security. San Antonio will be cybersecurity USA. And the reason we know, because we have NSA, at Port San Antonio, we have the 24th and 25th Army. They are cyber warriors. Those are the ones making a difference. And our hope is that our children, our guys listening, right? You tell your kids, your grandkids, and everybody else, computer technology, cybersecurity is the way to go for the future. And those are the jobs, similar to how you're going to talk a little bit about solar jobs, these are the new jobs and technologies that are coming in the future. Right. They no longer have to work with your hands and your back and, and carrying stuff. You work with your brain. Sure. And you make that opportunity. You invest in that education. We want people to know what it is to be able to be a cybersecurity warriors, because that's the cutting edge. Every day you hear about somebody being hacked, whether it's an actress, an actor, or a movie, or Game of Thrones, somebody's being hacked, right? right? The reality is we need to do that protection. We have people who are now being trained, and that is the industry of the future, and San Antonio will be on the cutting edge for that. And it starts and will be at Port San Antonio. Yeah, and so you guys what, you guys are really focusing all your attention there. Correct. We, we, but we're still respectful of what we've always had there, which is our Boeings, our, our, our standard arrows, which is the manufacturing. If you think about it, most people didn't realize, but Air Force One was being redone here at San Antonio at Boeing. Well, right down the road on the south side of San Antonio, the southwest part. That's important to know. Those are our mechanics. Those are our people who are making a difference. We are in the business of creating jobs. When Kelly Air Force Base closed in 1995, there were 12,000 jobs. Today, there are 12,500 jobs at Port San Antonio. Over 70 different vendors. Pause. For Purple Hearts is an example of that. Sure. In Next to a Boeing, next to a Standard Arrow, next to uh, organizations like Avanza and other ones making a difference. It's a balance that we have out there. From our perspective, we went to recreate what we had out there. At the point in the height of Kelly Air Force Base in the early 90s and the late 80s, we had 25,000 people working wow. out there, 24 7. We're at 12.5. Our goal is to be 5,000 more by 2020. That's what we're, we're heading towards. We need to continue to create those jobs, which has the ripple effects, right? You get the jobs there, then people in San Antonio will have a place where the kids get their education. They don't have to move to Austin. They don't have to move to Houston. They don't have to move to Dallas. They stay here in San Antonio and get the jobs that are here. And these are jobs that the average pay is going to be between 65 and 85,000 a year. Awesome. That will rebuild the middle class of San Antonio, which is what represented Kelly in the past and will represent Kelly in uh, Port San Antonio in the future. Thanks, Juan. Thanks for your time. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.